Good day. So today I want to take a look at the oscilloscope. And to look at the oscilloscope, I've uh, gone back about uh, 40 or 50 years and pulled out an old analog oscilloscope. And I think the analog scopes provide a really good introduction into what a scope is and what it does. And although they're not anywhere near as useful as the fancy digital scopes that we have right now, and you're not going to be able to buy an analog scope anywhere except in the uh, secondhand market, if you walk into your shop and there's an old scope sitting around, well, if you've got 10 of them, you might get rid of, you know, eight or nine of them, but keep a couple around because they can do some interesting things, one of which is open the door into some interesting electronics history because the scope really led to a whole bunch of interesting developments, uh, including the displays on radar, television, uh, early arcade games, and uh, that's because they're all based around the cathode ray tube. Now, the cathode ray tube is, of course, what made televisions work, and it is buried into this side of the scope right here. And at the back of the unit, there's a high voltage coil that generates an electron beam, and it fires that electron beam at the screen right here. Same thing that happened in a television. And uh, as the electron beam gets fired at the screen, there are vertical and horizontal coils that generate a magnetic field that can deflect that beam. So depending on how strong the horizontal coils are, you can control whether the beam hits on this side or whether it comes across and hits on this side of the screen. So as we're coming along right here, the horizontal coils are gradually having their voltage increased as it comes across, and that leads to the dot sliding across the screen. Now we can do the same thing with our voltage, and we can uh, move this up and down on the screen, and I can simulate that by adjusting its vertical position right now. As I adjust that uh, dial right there, I'm controlling the deflection on the vertical coils, so I'm steering that electron beam back and forth across the screen. Now, this is really useful from a diagnostic point of view so that we can take a look at high-speed changes in electrical signals. Uh, as soon as you get into dealing with electrical signals, which have changes and fluctuations, you're dealing with something that's a little too complex for your standard multimeter to be able to diagnose because those signals will be changing so quickly that the uh, multimeter can't see what's going on. Your oscilloscope lets you see what's going on, lets you diagnose and troubleshoot and understand what's happening inside your scope, uh, inside your circuit, where you're dealing with uh, signals. So let's take a look a little more at what's going on right in here. We've got some uh, dials and switches and buttons on here. Uh, makes it look like a really complex instrument. And technically, maybe it is. But when you break it down, the ones that you need to use most often are pretty easy to understand. The things that we're looking for is, keep in mind, this is essentially a really high-speed voltmeter. So we need to be able to control the speed that this dot goes across the screen. And we want to be able to read the voltage off the screen right here. Now, right now I've got everything disconnected. My probe is just sitting right here. I'll talk more about the probe later. So I am just sliding along at zero volts. And I've set this up so that my zero volt line is right on the center of the screen. That means if I have a positive signal, the voltage is gonna go up. And if I have a negative voltage, that's gonna go down. So sliding back and forth across here. So if I was looking at an AC signal, I might see a waveform that comes in and out like that as the dot goes across the screen. Now, this is a dual channel oscilloscope. So we can also turn on a second channel right here. You see this one labels them A and B. Quite often they're labeled one and two. And if I turn on that second channel, there you can see I've got a second dot coming across the screen right now. And they travel in lockstep and I can control the position of channel B with that dial. So if I wanted, I could put a second signal down here and then I could compare uh, the uh, changes in those dots. We're only gonna look at one channel on here today. So I'm gonna turn channel B off, but you can also find uh, four and six and eight channel scopes, uh, all, all depending on the complexity of the analysis that you need to do. Now, right now I've got the dot moving across the screen as slowly as it can. Well. Technically, I can stop it too. 
but uh, let's uh, let it keep moving across the screen. I've got this dial right here labeled time per division and I'm in the millisecond setting right here and my magnification is down to 1x so I'm looking at 200 milliseconds per division. So when it talks about divisions those are the big lines on the screen right in here and so from right here to right here is one division. You can see it's broken down into five smaller subdivisions but each of these divisions and there should be five to right there and five to right there uh, right now it's going to be taking 200 milliseconds so the time that it takes to go from the center line to out here 200 milliseconds 400 milliseconds 600 milliseconds 800 milliseconds 1000 milliseconds which is one second so just watch that dot come along and 1001 there we go that is one second and in fact, the scope was far more accurate in doing that than my lovely 1001 would be. Now, we can speed that dot up a little bit by turning this dial. And now I've doubled the speed to 100 milliseconds per division. And you can see it now. There's 10 divisions across the screen. 100, 200, 300, 400, and 1,000 milliseconds over here. It should be taking one second to go across the screen. So if we wait for it to start, and 1,001. There we go. One second going across here. At 50 milliseconds per division, 20 milliseconds per division, 10 milliseconds per division. Now, on the recording, you're probably just seeing three or four dots appearing right here. Uh, that's got to do with the synchronization rate between the camera and the screen. So uh, the camera is only capturing so many frames per second. To the human eye, this is starting to look like a continuous line all the way across the screen. And as I go faster still, now you start to see that continuous line uh, on, the, uh, on the display screen as well. Right now, I am down to one millisecond per division. So uh, it's taking 10 milliseconds for this dot to spin across the screen. So in other words, that dot's scanning across the screen uh, 100 times per second or at a frequency of 100 hertz. Now, as you can see, when we start getting fine lines like that, uh, you can think about television because television worked on the same sort of concept. The electron beam would scan across the screen. It would do every second line. That was called an interlaced display. And so it would come down here. And then a 30th, uh, a 60th of a second later, it would come back up here and it would repeat the uh, odd numbered lines. So it would do even numbered lines, then odd numbered lines and it would uh, project them onto the screen. It wasn't a particularly high resolution display, but uh, it certainly worked for many decades uh, for uh, communications purposes. You might also uh, recognize that solid line as a representative of some old arcade games. And if you think of things like uh, Asteroids uh, is one that definitely had vector graphics because instead of using a raster graphics where they scan the line across like a standard television, they actually used an oscilloscope but just sent it signals to draw the asteroids and to draw the spaceship right on here and it would very quickly go out, scan the electron beam in the shape of the ship, scan it in the shape of an asteroid, scan it over here and that was why those uh, programs had such nice crisp clean clear lines. And we, we replicate them on our modern display screens and you can't tell a vector line from a raster line because uh, of the resolution of modern screens. But I tell you, back in the 1970s, you could notice the difference. So anyways, we've got this line coming across the screen right now and this is telling me that I've got a very smooth zero volt line coming in right here. Well, we'd like to see a little bit of a signal coming through here because oscilloscopes are great at analyzing signals. So we should plug our probe into something to take a look at a signal. And the oscilloscope probe is an interesting device. It's a little more complex than your standard probe for the multimeter. And part of what makes it complex is how you plug it in. And it plugs in with what we call a BNC uh, plug right here. And the BNC plug has a small cable coming down the middle and shielding around the outside. The cable in the middle is our signal and the shielding around the outside is connected to ground. So this connection right here on the multimeter 
right here. This goes back to chassis ground, so that is connected to the ground of your house. It actually goes through an electrical connection and eventually plugs straight into the dirt. So you've kind of got to watch that sometimes when you're hooking it up and measuring devices that are also set, uh, connected to ground that you don't get things hooked up backwards because your ground signal definitely is coming off the ground. Now, that gives you a shielded connection all the way around here. There's a braided cable that comes up inside this line, and that braided cable protects your signal line that's coming in from the tip right here of the probe. That protects it from external interference. Uh, you can have external interference coming from any number of sources. Quite often you get a 60 hertz signal that you would pick up from the electrical wiring in your house. Uh, and we can talk more about induced signals another time. Now, coming out here, uh, your ground comes around the outside and there'll be a little clip that clips in right here. And this will be your ground connection. So you have to connect this into ground and normally you just clip it on. I've clipped it on to a test lead right here. So I can plug that into ground on my Arduino board right there. Your signal probe comes up to the tip right here and uh, this connects with a little spring-loaded tip and things can fit in there. You can fit a little wire in there and that's really nice because now your signals are all connected and you can be hands-free while you go back to uh, take measurements or work on your circuit and observe what's happening. There's one other thing, uh, one or two other things you should uh, know about the probe is that this tip comes off and you do have a probe in here. So if you want to probe a signal, you can just touch it onto that uh, right there. You can even touch it to your finger and you'll start to see that you're interfering with the signal just by what you're doing when you touch it right there. So that slides on right there and fits like that. Some probes will also have a setting right on here and that says 1x, 10x, and ref. So the ref is when you're using as a reference. We don't need to use that very often. But what this controls is this actually, it's basically a resistor inside there, but this controls the sensitivity of the probe. And uh, what we can do is on this scope, we run at the 1x mode. So you can see the arrows pointing to x1. On most of our digital scopes, will run at 10x mode and the digital scopes can swap back and forth. Um, there's uh, buttons on there to, which I'll talk about later, to match to your probe. But what you need to know is that most of, the, of our probes in the shop here, we're gonna be running at 10x. X10 as it says. Sounds better as X10. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and plug this into our breadboard right here. And because I've got a test lead on here, I will just pop this into right here and actually before I take a look at the LED, let's just take a look at a steady five volt signal. Okay, and when I plug it in there, you can see the signal on the scope jumps from zero volts up to five volts. Now, how do I know that's five volts? Well, I know that's five volts because on the, uh, zoom in a little bit right here and look up a bit at the dial and focus right there please there we go so right here it says amplitude per division on this dial and this section right here is for controlling our vertical over on this section we were controlling our horizontal and talking about the time uh, with our vertical right up and down here uh, amplitude per division is in units of volts and so this is telling me right now I'm at two volts per division now what that means is that if I set this to be my zero line, you'll recall we were right down there at zero, I plug in right here. Now I've got a steady five volt signal because I'm at two volts, four volts, and you could actually say, well, that's actually uh, probably closer. You know, if it was five exactly, it would be right in the middle between those two dots in there. It might be a little under five volts by the time the power gets from the computer out to the board and goes through the board and gets out to the power supply. But that's what we're looking at. We're looking at five volts there. If I bring this up to five volts, you can see right here, this is my zero volt line. Uh, then this comes up to right here and yeah that's showing me just a little below five we should be getting five uh, theoretically but uh, well we can check on a 
uh, more precise device. There we go. So that is a steady signal and you can use it just like a voltmeter. You don't get a number, you get a position on a graph. But if I take it over here and I look at, at a changing signal, now I'm starting to see some pulsing come in there. Now it still looks like a streak because I'm going so fast. Let me change my time settings and slow this down a little bit. And now we've got a display It's coming along right here. Well, if I slow it right down, you can see that display jumping from zero to five. I'm gonna move this back up to two volts per division so you can really see that. And there you can see we're coming in. Sometimes we're at zero volts and sometimes we're at five volts. So on, an, uh, on a multimeter, if you're using a voltmeter probe, the voltmeter would have a really hard time figuring that out because is it five, is it zero, is it five, is it zero? It keeps changing so fast, I can't keep up with it. But on the oscilloscope, you know, we can just keep coming in here and making it run a little bit faster and a little bit faster. And now I'm at, uh, at 10 milliseconds per division. And you can see it's taking almost the entire screen to go across right here. So we're starting just over here. You can see it's high right here goes low right here, comes back up, and it actually goes high when it's off the screen and then loops back around to this side and goes low again. And we're looking at about uh, 10 divisions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, there are 10 divisions on there. I can count to 10. Uh, so 10 divisions at 10, milliseconds per division is giving us a um, uh, uh, 100 milliseconds per pulse and that is indeed what I put into the code. I just took the blink routine and dropped it right in there and I have that uh, blinking at 100 milliseconds. Let's take a look. I'm just going to change that down and I'm going to make it blink at 10 milliseconds and so we'll tweak the Arduino code and let's just zoom out so we can see the Arduino as it changes a little bit here. And upload. And now to my eye, that Arduino uh, is making that light be solid red. You can see a little bit of flicker on it on the camera screen. And up here, you can now see that each of our pulses is filling up one um, division right here. And we're set to 10 milliseconds per division. So that's 10 milliseconds of off, and that's 10 milliseconds of on, off, on, off. And so now you can get in and you can start measuring the timing really, really accurately. So as you can see, 10 milliseconds is way too fast for the human eye to pick out but the oscilloscope is picking it out no problem at all. In fact, the oscilloscope is pretty good. I can take that down to one millisecond on and one millisecond off, and I'll upload that code. And now you can see there's, well, on your display, it's looking a little bit longer. On mine, it's really small divisions. Let's speed this up and you can see what we're actually looking at in here. And there we go. This is what I'm seeing as well. It's showing up on the screen nicely. I'm now set to one millisecond, one millisecond per division on the time. And let's just zoom in a hair and make that easier to see. And there you can see that the display is set up one millisecond of on and one millisecond of off. So you can get in and you can start analyzing the time really easily. And where something like that might come into interesting is if we go to uh, one millisecond of on and two milliseconds of off. It goes blank while it uploads. And now you can get in there and you can start analyzing what's going on with your signal. And you can say, oh, I'm on for 10 milliseconds and I'm off for 20 milliseconds. And I'm hitting just under five volts as my peak voltage. Uh, really, really useful when you're looking at signals. Now we're looking at a digital signal right now. Analog signals that we have for audio will be much smoother and more, uh, more ripply and sometimes a little uh, more difficult to capture. But this gives us a nice stable signal that we can take a look at for our introduction on how to use a scope.
Now, in order to capture this image, there are a couple of controls that you do have to work with, and one of them is the trigger. Uh, you'll notice that we've got it set up with our timing so that we start with a new high right here every time it goes high, low, high, low. And we can play with the X position of that a little bit. We can move our signals back on the screen or forward. So if we wanted to put a specific point somewhere on the screen, we could do that. So you can see here, it waits until it sees a signal go high. It grabs that, there's on for 10 milliseconds, then it's off, it comes over here, on, off. And we can position that exactly where we need it to go. And that sometimes helps with uh, measuring what's going on on that screen. Uh, we also have something called the trigger level and it's a little easier to see on the uh, digital multimeters but the trigger level can be adjusted and we can turn it up and you can see there I went too high and I set my trigger level into this region right in here and that means that it's no longer picking up that trigger and pausing it and I bring that trigger level back down and oh, I went too low, it's down here, and now it's not catching that uh, trigger. So figuring out what your trigger level is, it's an internal normal trigger running off of channel A. So we're using this right here. And getting that trigger level set up right will help freeze your signal on the screen so you can see what's going on. And uh, that's sort of the basics of a scope. It's really a fancy high-speed voltmeter, but the abilities that it gives us are really, really uh, impressive. And when you start doing some neat things and mixing signals together, you can get some really, really cool displays. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later on. And we'll also talk about how this translates into using both a, um, a digital scope and how it works uh, with a USB scope because in our class uh, we're going to build a USB scope called the DP Scope SE where we'll use your computer as the display screen and we'll have a PIC microcontroller based device that does all of our data reading for us. And the one we're going to build costs about 30 bucks and it's got a resolution of 300 kilohertz. Uh, these, these scopes here go up to 15 megahertz and the scopes that we have on our desk in the shop go up to 200 megahertz. So uh, the more you spend on a scope, the fancier the scope, uh, the better the uh, resolution that you can get and the more features you have. This is a nice old fashioned uh, analog oscilloscope uh, that we can use to display all sorts of data and uh, a little bit of electronics history because if you take a look at all of the old devices uh, they were pretty much based on a cathode ray screen and the electron beam coming out and hitting the phosphors and making them glow right here. The way it works is you've got two coils in the back. One coil, we control how long it takes for it to, uh, uh, to sweep from one side of the screen to the other. The other coil is controlled by your probe that comes in here. That signal gets amplified and it's used to control the vertical position. So as you come along here, when you're at low voltage, you're low, and when you're at high voltage, you're up high. By being very careful about our calibrations, we can measure those voltages and those times very accurately so we can discuss our signal and what's going on.